the car is much more than a collection of parts. It's, it's, the, it's the integration of those parts in a way that becomes seamless to the user or to the customer. My name is Wakar Hashem. I'm the VP responsible for FF91. My title is Vehicle Line Executive or VLE. Today uh, we are presenting the FF91. Um, this car in particular has been driven from Los Angeles to uh, Las Vegas by our CEO on Sunday uh, without any stops. So we charged it once in our headquarters in uh, California, uh, Los Angeles and then we drove this car over here. So this uh, particular vehicle is equipped with three um, 350 horsepower each motors. So the front motor is a single unit that drives the front wheels and the rear unit is driven by two independent motors with torque vectoring. So a combined total horsepower is 1,050 horsepower. So when you get in the car and you can uh, tape the uh, acceleration on this car, you will see the feel that you get. The whole premise of Faraday was based on uh, the vision of our founder, uh, who basically came from a consumer electronics background. And uh, the problem that we were trying to solve from the very beginning, and I think you will see how far we have come along since the beginning of the company, is that you're spending most of your time either at work or at home. But in between, the commute is kind of boring, mundane, and you're sort of out of it. You're not connected, you're not able to enjoy and relax. Um, so the whole premise of Faraday was to be able to give technology to the people that the commute time, which is like the third internet living space, becomes seamless. So let's say if you're watching a movie at home and you want to continue finish watching it while you're in commute, you can continue to do that in the car. The software and the uh, AI technology has, that has been incorporated in this vehicle is going to allow for it to sense what the user wants and adapt to the needs of the consumer. So that's the new thing, the big thing about this vehicle. Um, what we have been doing over the last year or so since we've been uh, building prototype cars is essentially using those cars to mature and develop the features and functionality of our software. So when you get into the vehicle and you experience the uh, in internet integration in this vehicle, you will see that um, you know that smart technology has been got, uh, taken to a whole new level other than you know what the normal vehicles do, which is essentially um, you know respond to the demands of the consumer. It comes back to the what I described to you earlier. <laughs> the whole concept of the third internet living space, which is unique and different to Faraday. And this is what initially attracted me to this company from General Motors, where I used to work for many years. Uh, because the car is much more than a collection of parts. It's, it's, the, it's the integration of those parts in a way that becomes seamless to the user or to the customer. So that's what we are trying to achieve here with this vehicle, right? Um, you know, the vehicle learns, obviously, where what your normal routine is. And so it will automatically call up maps and displays and, and you know, points of interest. And, you know, uh, rather than taking you through multiple screens, you can do a lot of these things with voice commands. What we are uh, planning to do is uh, go through a staged launch. We have a plant in Hanford, California, just south of Fresno, which is being tooled up. And our plan is that by uh, third quarter of this year, we're going to start doing a launch ramp up. So we have pre-orders in the system, so we will start building vehicles for those customers and get them out to them as quickly as possible and then continue to build up. We also have uh, plans to, um, uh, to expand our uh, FF91 in China, which is where the majority of the market is at the moment for EVs. So we already have land that the company owns and we are developing it to uh, launch a year after the U.S. launch. The vehicle has different options available uh, from the, the electric powertrain to the interior uh, IOV Internet of Vehicle uh, functionality. Uh, the range is from like low 100,000 to up to 200,000.
front doors. New doors are already closed. So we can also close through the user interface as well. We, we're taking a, an approach with our voice controls that we call voice first. So all the major functionality in the car can be used uh, or exploited by using your voice. So if we get in the car and we want to find nearby restaurants, we don't have to take out our phone anymore and look at Yelp. All we have to do is query our in-car voice assistant. Find nearby Italian restaurants with at least four stars. Here are several Italian restaurants with more than four stars sorted by distance. So the voice assistant is able to recognize multiple queries strung together in what we call compound queries. And we're able to string together these multiple components of the query to get really detailed results. So FFAI found nearby Italian restaurants with at least four stars. So we have also what's called contextual queries so that FFAI understands any follow-up queries relate to what we had just requested. Take us to the third option. Navigating to Maggiano's Little Italy located at 3200 Las Vegas Boulevard South in Las Vegas. So it understood that we were referring to the third option that we had previously seen. So now that we're on our way to the destination, we can make any follow-up queries again, and it'll understand that those queries relate to the, des to the trip that we're taking to that restaurant. I'm hungry. Here are several restaurants. So even though we're already on our way to one, we can make this command to find even more restaurants that are on the route that we had already initiated. So in addition to finding nearby points of interest, we can also use FFAI to find um, our favorite music using any of the third party apps that we're able to install inside of 9-1. Play music by the Beatles. Playing songs by the Beatles. We've integrated FFAI with third party apps like Spotify uh, so that we're able to seamlessly make these requests while we're on the fly. So now that we're on our way to the restaurant, we can start playing back video using our favorite streaming services on the front passenger display. And we can control that using our phone. So we're logged into the front passenger display and we can start playback from our the top phone. Top 10 strategic technology trends are trends that are shifting, changing, reaching key tipping points and driving disruption. These are the technology trends that you can't afford to ignore. We're taking a look at the technology trends around two themes this year, people-centric. And the same goes for the rear passenger display. We can cast from our phone to the rear passenger display and watch any content that we want while we're on the road. All right, so now we're on our way to the destination. We've got our favorite video content playing on the front passenger display and the rear passenger display. And this is how we define the third internet living space. In the back, it starts with this 27 inch HD display where we can stream content uh, through this display. We have three high speed cellular modems that we aggregate the data to get uh, all of our content through. So we connect to three different cell carriers. And once we aggregate that data, we combine it and we're able to stream this content. And streaming is um, lag free, um, no real delays, and upload download speed. Nothing. It, uh, there shouldn't be uh, any lag time. I mean, you're looking at um, data that's pulled from uh, AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, and we always take the strongest uh, data source and, and present it to the users. So, you're able to control the video feed from your phone. So we're in the back seat, so we'll control the rear seat display. And we can activate the video through here. Oh wow, yeah. 
So we have individual sound zones in the car that allow each passenger to have their own audio feed. Mm -hmm. So for us in the back seat, while we're watching this, we'll be the only ones really to hear this content. While in the front of the car, the front passengers Interesting. are going to be in their own audio zone and they have uh, audio dedicated to the front passenger display. So if they're watching content on there, right. only those front passengers can hear it. So it's the same for phone calls, for video conferencing. Hmm. We're able to direct the audio from the headliner, from the headrests to each passenger directly.